Uh, looks like I think we we are doing a little bit of introduction and some key thoughts. So I think rather the, you know let, we'll stick with that theme then. We will uh, you know so I'll, I'll I'll invite Ritu next and we'll sort of go to uh, Rupam and Gambhir afterwards to sort of you know introduce yourselves the company and your know, key thoughts about the space. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ritu Lal. And uh, I represent a company called uh, Amplus Solar. Mm -hmm. And uh, Amplus is uh, among the, we're only about three and a half years old in terms of our first rooftop solar plant. But we're among the senior citizens of the rooftop solar industry on the OPEX, PASS, BOOT, or PPA model, you know, the, the various different terminologies that uh, this sort of segment is known as. Uh, when we began our journey uh, in about 2013 is when we started, uh, when we identified uh, distributed and rooftop solar as a business model. The only way to go forward in those days, if you were a user, whether residential or industrial or commercial, the only avenue available was to invest your own money because the PPA model was non-existent. So there were companies like ours that came in and uh, this model was working in other countries. In the developed world, it was there. Uh, this model in India was working on the grid scale, on the solar parks or the grid scale plants, where the PPAs were between utilities and private developers. So essentially what we did was customize this and started offering it to users. Uh, obviously, uh, to date, the number one driver in this segment is the commercial and industrial segment. So they are uh, today, for, uh, uh, for all of us developers, they are the bulk of our business. Other than a handful of large uh, residential societies, uh, this model uh, has not been able to reach, primarily for credit reasons, the domestic individual user. So individual domestic users continue to buy. First of all, the adoption level is very low. They continue to buy and uh, you know, uh, the EPC method is what they're using. Uh, so our first plant came up in the middle of, uh, I think it came up in May of 14. And that was a 100 kilowatt installation on the rooftop of, uh, of an engineering college. Uh, today we have uh, over 200 plants across the country in across uh, 90, no, 20 states, uh, either commissioned or under implementation, uh, giving us a total capacity of about 140 odd uh, megawatts. We also have now ventured into what is called open access solar, again uh, for uh, direct PPAs uh, for uh, private parties. Uh, so most of this is in the state of Karnataka, which has a very progressive and uh, investor-friendly, solar-friendly open access policy. So here what happens is large industrial users and large commercial users are not restricted by the size of their rooftops or the area available on their premises. So for example, one of our largest PPAs is with a company, is with Honda. And through using this open access network, we are going to supply them 30 megawatts of solar power. So this company you know, primarily will become you know, an entirely green consumer of energy. So uh, this is, however, you know, setting something like this depends very, very heavily on state policy. And uh, there are a handful of states in the country where these, these solutions are always possible. So even in the area of distributed solar, technically speaking, we are not just limited to the rooftops. You know, the opportunities are endless. And a lot depends on where the mandate is, where the regulators want this to go, and all stakeholders involved in the process, you know, how far they want to go with this uh, kind of a mandate today. In terms of price viability, in the commercial and industrial segment, other than states where the government subsidizes energy, Grid parity, so to say, has been achieved. And we are able to sell solar power on in, in the rooftop segment at prices which are significantly lower or marginally lower, depending on which state we're talking about, than the equivalent unit of grid power. 
So you're able to get green energy and you're able to get savings. This is not always true in the domestic segment because a lot of domestic consumers tend to be subsidized, which is probably another reason why the entire growth today is being driven by commercial and industry. So with that, I'll just uh, uh, pass it on to the other members and then you know we can get into more of a discussion whenever you feel like. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Rupam Gautam, and I'm representing a company called Fourth Partner Energy Private Limited. Uh, Fourth Partner Energy Private Limited basically started in 2010, almost. Uh, we just completed seven years in October, uh, having a portfolio of more than 70 megawatt and a clientage of around 1,500 clients. We proudly say that we are one of the uh, topmost company working specifically in the rooftop segment. Rooftop, as Ritu clearly mentioned, is not only about single rooftop, it's more of distributed type. So uh, today's newspaper, I don't know how many could, uh, of you got time to read it, had two very important news coming up. One of them was uh, the Uchahar plant of NTPC that caught fire and almost 50 people were dead. So that is one of the major coal-driven plant of NTPC. And the second one was uh, a tagline, a headline basically, which uh, took my attention that uh, reality dawns on India's ambitious solar plants. So somehow, I mean, when I got into all of the details, it is a reality, in fact, that maybe like six months before, when we were very pretty excited about the downfall of the prices in uh, utility sector of solar, which touched almost 2.44 per unit, this price is not possible at this moment, thanks to the GST and the anti-dumping duty, which is to be, uh, which is coming off late. Now, when we talk about this, that utility is seeing a tough time, the option left is rooftop. And with India being such a huge country and having ample of rooftops available, this is the right time that we people and we EPC developers start doing that. Talking about the firm as such, uh, we always got the option of getting into the utility sector, but somehow we didn't. Maybe we had that mission or that vision in our mind that we need to stick to the rooftop segment. And that is the reason that we just now completed a huge uh, rooftop plant at Ferrero. So that's one of the largest in Maharashtra. And we just signed PPS for almost 10 megawatt of rooftop. So it's not only that rooftop is uh, secluded to five, 500 m uh, kilowatt or maybe one megawatt. You have uh, companies, you have industrial sector, you have commercial sector, which is having ample of space. Secondly, uh, it's not always the positive side that is driving the rooftop sector. There are certain negatives also. Net metering is one of them. Storage, if we talk about in commercial sector, is one of them. Uh, definitely in states like Karnataka, Gujarat, we are finding it tough as companies to get the net metering done. Then uh, we are finding it tough to get the capacity as per the sanction load installed because the percentage is pretty less. And then there are uh, issues like the increasing prices of modules. Definitely now people have this notion in their mind that solar has to fall only. So when you go down in the market now with new revised prices, People say, Are, toh, kam hone wala tha. how come it has increased? So that whole knowledge and whole education to the client is right now the most uh, need of the hour, and we need to do that. Uh, otherwise, this is one of the booming sectors. Central subsidy has been given. That is also one of the major points, which is helping uh, us in institutional sector, because not just industrial and commercial, institutional is also playing a good role, because that is where their whole consumption is during the daytime. And uh, as developers, we have a good chunk of energy that we can provide them. Uh, cutting short onto this, uh, since we'll be having more of discussion on this, uh, I'll pass it on to uh, Gambhir Balia ji. Yeah, good afternoon, friends. Uh, my name is Gambhir Balian. I am representing a company called Everest Industries Limited, uh, which is not a primarily solar uh, company. It is a Everest. A solution a roofing solution provider com providing company uh, established in 1934 very old company working from last 80 years we have installed billions of square feet of the roofing on all India basis and as well as nowadays we are installing 
uh, completing approximate two, 20, 20 to 25 buildings every month, all, all India basis. Therefore, the idea came to the Everest Industries to enter into the solar business. It is a recently entered entity into the solar as an EPC company from last six to seven months only. We are witnessing a tremendous trend in our inquiries also as we are into the uh, pre-engineer steel building also and uh, that is having a metal roofing over it. We have a, a substantial interest from the industrial customers they want to solarize their roof, therefore they are asking to replace their old damaged corrugated asbestos etc. seats with the new metal seats to install the uh, solars, rooftop solar. As well as with the new inquiries for new fresh buildings we are des designing from the preliminary stage, approximate 30% inquiries are coming of the with the solar loads. Customers are as aware as of now they want their roof with the solar friendly. So we, we are making a building solar uh, suitable and we are working in this direction. We are also witnessing that approximate 50% and capex and 50% uh, opex is coming in this category. Uh, this is the trend. We are working in this direction. Let's hope we go ahead. We, are co we will cover most of the buildings. Our buildings we are concentrating first. Uh, thank you, Rupam. Th thank you, Gambir. Uh, Gambir, it's a pleasure, pleasure to have you. I'm glad you could, you could, you could join us instead of Vitin. So that's that's wonderful. Uh, <clears throat> so just uh, to sort of uh, you know uh, quickly introduce, uh, in, in, I mean introduce uh, like myself. My name is Anubhraj Joshi. I represent a company called Cleantech Solar, very much a Resco company, uh, essentially solar IPP. Uh, you know, call it what you will, on the rooftop and distributed generation uh, side. We are venturing into this area of what you might call open access, off-site, or uh, you know, or uh, group captive uh, kind of uh, projects as well. Uh, I mean, I think one of the things that's a little bit different about us is that from inception, we are a pan-Asia company. Uh, we are now present in about seven countries, uh, but about 60 to 70 percent of our business is in India. Similar to some of the rest of the group uh, here, some you know with more megawatts, some with less. I mean, we've been around three, three and a half years. We have about seventy megawatts or so, and uh, you know, uh, and uh, you know, generally, in fact, I would you know add to something what Ritu, uh, to what Ritu, Ritu said, and I think she would tend to agree that even amongst con commercial and industrial, really we are talking about industrial, because uh, you know, CNI is most of the rooftop and most of CNI is industrial. Uh, challenges are many, and we'll sort of get into, into it. My job as moderator is to, like, you know, less, less to opine, more to sort of ask questions. So, uh, you know, we'll share my views over time, but I'll ask the pan panelists as we go. Uh, but that's essentially, you know, uh, that, that's essentially it about us. We are present across India, all pretty much all the solar states. I think about 15 or 18 states uh, thereabouts, and like I said, about six other countries, including Singapore, Thailand, uh, uh, Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia, Vietnam. So uh, with that, I just wanted to take a step back and sort of not the in introductions are over and. You know, along with it, people have sort of put in a few comments. Some of you may not have entirely registered who we, who all we have here. So, you know, we have a roofing company. I don't know how many of you sort of, you know, uh, in fact, and now these days, companies aren't roofing companies, they're PEB companies. They build the entire structure, right? And these guys are sort of, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the unicorn, it's the holy grail, right? All, all of us are sort of always hoping for a solution the industry, or rather the, the government, everybody's hoping for a solution where rooftops get integrated with solar, or the buildings themselves, the PEV themselves get integrated with solar. While that always remains a not easy task, I think we can't give up the thought of that holy grail, because that would make things, uh, I mean, not just easier for us, but really easier for the industry to grow. So we do have a, we have a roofing company here, you, you know, please note that. Uh, you can sort of address some questions that way, what are the challenges, what are the difficulty, uh, you know, uh, things of ease of doing business, etc. We have three rescos, you know, conveniently for you sitting next to each other. Uh, we have uh, an EPC company, uh, uh, you know, uh, person, main rely on solar, as uh, you know, I earlier pointed out. 
And we also have a, as I mentioned, a career IS officer who was the governor of Chhattisgarh and is presently the director general of Solar Power Developer Association, uh, you know, with Mr. Shekhar Dutt. Uh, what this will help you do as we evolve, and hopefully, so we can get a little bit more of your time, is that you will hear different perspectives. If you'll ask the three people in the middle, the tendency, and I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, fourth partner and Rupa have been sort of more. Uh, perhaps wider in their approach, the rest of us are a little bit more down the straight and narrow, where most of us will focus on fairly high credit clients, large rooftops, large power usage, keep our life simple and just keep growing because at this point for us, volume, large capital, private equity, these are things which are kind of driving our thought process. But there is, there's going to be some very important inputs from the CapEx developments, which an EPC is equally open to, which we are less open to. There's going to, I mean, there's some, some input from the side which is very hard to do. And that's why I expectedly, obviously, you know, uh, Mr. Dutt is the only person who'll talk about it. All of these other rooftops, what about all of these other rooftops, housing societies, government buildings? You always say that's a hard sector, and you kind of, you know, and then you just sort of leave it at that. But as an industry, you shouldn't leave it at that, right? I mean, we may want to because we, if we find it very difficult to do those 500 kilowatts, and the government PPAs, etc., take time and what have you, but not to forget, I mean, not to forget that that's a huge seg segment. So you know, and then obviously you have the three rescos and you know the roofing company. So with that said, I wanted to ask the the audience, I mean, sort of two linked questions, and just you know note the number on a piece of paper or in your mind. And then I'll throw that question to the, you know, to the panelists and see what answers we get. So the two answer, two questions are: in the next 12 months, right? In the next four 12 months, how many megawatts of rooftop solar combined do you think we will be installing? And the second question is: in 10 years, how much would we be installing? So in one year and then 10 years. So just sort of, you know, make a mental note of it or write it down what you what you think. And that that said. Then let me start with, you know, we'll get to the challenges and all that later, but just a quick answer on what you think we'll install in the next 12 months and in the next 10 years. Rooftop. Yeah, as we are witnessing through the, our own data, as we are depending on our own uh, roofing solution provider, we are, we are getting a tremendous support from the customer and the various different inquiries from various sectors, industrial as well as commercial. We are not concentrating on the residential one because we have a huge database. Uh, in my opinion, that uh, in next one year, uh, we should be crossing around in gigawatts. Uh, maybe uh, next one year. Our target is, the uh, government target is 40 gigawatts for the rooftop solar, uh, I think by 2022, uh, which should be completing uh, in my opinion, so uh, uh, so sorry. In the, in the year, to if I can na narrow you down to yeah. how many gigawatts, as in at least a ballpark, is it ten or two in the just the one year period, and yeah. then the ten year period. So ten year, you yeah. answered the question. We'll hit the forty yeah. Uh, yeah. in the next yeah. one year. What do you think we will? Yeah, hit? one year we we expect maybe as industry, not as that, industry, yeah. as industry for the rooftop solar distributed. We are expecting the ten gigawatt. Okay, so yeah. so about ten. Yeah. Uh, Rupa. Uh, the best part is that since we started from as an EPC player and then we moved on to RESCO, uh, we have ventured into all the segments. I mean, talk about the residential, we have done it. Uh, talk about uh, industrial, we have done it. So moving by the current pace, uh, I feel industry should be crossing maybe next one year uh, around one gigawatt or something because Definitely the opportunities are many, but there are many hurdles also, the PPAs and all those things. So uh, another gigawatt in a an year and should be around 20 gigawatt by 2020. It should be there. So so 10 years, probably the 40 gigawatt. Yeah, that would be done. Yeah, be, yeah. Be hit. Okay. The 40 gigawatt target in about 10 years time. In about 10 years time definitely not for me in 2022 uh, i'd be i pleasantly is a mild word i'd be 
<laughs> crazily debatedly thrilled if we get there in 2022. Uh, as a rooftop distributor, and I'm not taking into account now the water pumps and an entire other segment that I do not understand or mini grids. So just uh, distributed rooftop, I'd say we're about, about 1.3 or something, double it to about three gigawatts in the next 12 months. So adding as much as already there, adding cumulatively. About one and a half. Uh, yes, that, that should be possible, not easy. So to me, this is again a stretch target. And the reason I'm not being very bullish is the last three or four months is when there has been a tremendous increase in module prices. We were sitting at 26.28, we are now sitting at 36.38 cents. And uh, while I don't anticipate these coming down till about Q2 of next year, people, it may just settle at these levels, I don't know. But I have a feeling those who miss the boat, saying no, or girega, or girega, or girega, those people might now hold back and say, okay, I'm going to tide it out. And they're going to wait for things to fall. So I do see some people, at least people who started earlier on and had not signed up, say, you know, every two months that we delay our signature, the prices are coming down. Those guys will all hold back. Uh, so I'll come to you last. So yeah, your numbers. Uh, okay. So this morning we had uh, a data being said by uh, someone that this year in the world the total solar capacity installed was 100 gigawatt in 2017 till november so out of that india had 5 gigawatt so if you take a uh, rooftop to be roughly 20 percent or 30 percent of that installed capacity i believe we would be able to do uh, between 1.5 to 2 gigawatt of rooftop solar in the next one year uh, coming to the capacity in the next 10 years, it's it's actually a very, very difficult question to answer. And uh, considering the uncertainties that uh, ma'am just pointed out, I think in the next 10 years, we should be able to do at least more than 30 gigawatt of rooftop solar, definitely. A, a, a very measured set of panelists accompany me here, all right? And so uh, we, we, we had one, but he was only ambitious in, in one year. So, uh, Mr. Mr. Shekhar, that, uh, yeah. No, it was Some very interesting. A, yeah. It was very interesting, actually. And, uh, and I think, you know, some of the key indicators are how do you uh, sort of base your judgment? Now, off and on, I mean, I subscribe to, say, Indian Express or Hindustan Times, Times of India. Usually, Times of India or Hindustan Times has two-page supplement or two pages uh, of ad. And many times, it's the big builders who, who cover those pages. Like I said, I haven't seen earn a single advertisement in which they've said that they're going to give this township or this this thing with rooftop. Actually, this points out, ladies and gentlemen, that it points out your uh, sort of where there is nothing, the enterprising go. So I think it points out to the channels that you should go right now. Talk with the builders. Now, Ik Bangla Bane Nyara is a dream of everybody. And they, they do buy, and even now, as much as we spent on good cars, we are spending on houses. So people are buying houses. How are they getting a value for money? What way a particular block of houses is better than the others? Since our main thing is to sort of earn money through uh, solar. Maybe everybody who has a pie in the solar business should kind of use this opportunity. Next, all the houses, all big sectors, you know, you start from Hira Nandani to DLF and all that, should have discussions and see. If we get that, then this 40 gigawatts is possible. If it is not that more like more often than not, what happens is 
that uh, we have to come down to the real realistic uh, this thing and miss uh, miss gautam's uh, uh, assessment that 1 gigawatt looks perhaps but if it catches on and people start seeing the opportunity it will be enormous i mean it will be absolutely stupendous because people are spending money in uh, diesel generating cells and buying power at 17 rupees an unit so that can be shifted well, th thank you very much sir and uh, you know i in fact very much tend to agree and uh, you know while i'm not a lawyer the question was leading uh, the, the the point being that that's exactly the and that's why i was trying to ask a question about one year and 10 year realistically what is going on right now will go on for the next one year uh, i mean broadly speaking so most of us will end up agreeing on that around the 1 gigawatt or so number for the one year forward process and i'd be curious like in a minute to by show of hands to see how much of you went far north or south of that uh, but the great unknown for 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 us is let's call it the german way or for some to some extent the united states way but much more so the german way where virtually every rooftop every parking lot every parking space was converted into a parking lot covered parking lot and converted into a, into a solar plant and so on and so forth we do not have self similar houses the way you know the uh, much of the west does but in residential colonies we do and perhaps more so we may have housing colonies as opposed to individual houses being built to their own particular unique specs be that as it may our entire other sector from government buildings to residential to you know parking st structures to electric cars which can be charged under these parking structures is completely unexplored and there is no telling essentially what the size of that addressable market will be because this wave of cni i think once we start hitting 5 7 uh, 10 gigawatts we'll be kind of getting done uh, so uh, you know it's not it's not infinite so we have to look for the i mean you know the people here have to look for a different business model at some point of time uh, so so the point is again on the panel there's no point speaking just about specifically what you do and what your industry is we do that every day the idea is to sort of open uh, you know to get our sort of horizons expanded by having other people and thinking about these other sectors these other segments so i think as far as india is concerned or uh, the whole solar industry is concerned the magic lies in basically figuring out how to do the undoable uh, the one that is difficult to do financing is going to be challenging it was easier in quite a bit easier in the united states because of a variety of reasons primarily there being very good credit and self similar houses that the residential sector solar sector is larger than cni sector much larger and started sooner and is like in second or third stage of its maturity where cni is sort of just stage 2 so uh, i mean let's not assume that what we see in front of us the only is the only reality far from it in fact the only reality that, that has been seen is the other way around both germany and the united states which are the other two large markets have had far greater residential and all this other stuff than they have had this cookie cutter you know our bread and butter of the three people here that's just a small portion of of the whole pie 